At some point, when building a Rails application, you'll probably run into the need to make a long SQL query, like the one I have here in this product model when the user searches. I first need to make sure that the product is released, and that it's not discontinued, and that it has some quantity in stock, and that the name matches the query that the user typed in. Not very pretty. Now there are various third-party libraries to help out with this, such as Squeal, which I covered in the previous episode, but in this episode I want to show you various ways that you can rewrite this query using only Active Record and Errol. So let's see how we can improve this. First of all, if you have a lot of arguments at the end of the query and question marks littered about to determine where those values go, that can make it pretty hard to read because you need to mix and match them. Uh, one solution for this, which I usually do if I have uh, more than two question marks, is to do a hash of conditions. And this is nice if you have duplicate values as well because you can just assign them to uh, one uh, key. So we could say uh, the stock is two and the query is that user typed in query. So with a hash of conditions, you can just reference that inside of the SQL like this instead of using question marks, which makes it considerably more readable than what we had before. So if you have more than two or so, consider doing this. Another option to clean this up is to move sections of the query into name scopes. This has a nice side effect of those sections being reusable elsewhere in the application. Let me give you an example here with a snap of my fingers. There we go. I've split this up into five different name scopes. Uh, what I like about this is it's sort of self-documenting since each one has a name of what that given query does. I have this available scope which merges the various other scopes I made before. And then finally the search scope which finds all available products that match the user's typed in query. Now you probably noticed I'm using the Ruby 1.9 block syntax here. This is basically the same thing as calling a lambda here, but it's just a little bit shorter to type and also the arguments that pass in are a little bit different. They take place outside of the block, like this query here. Now it's not really necessary to use a lambda for each one of these scopes. For example, this in stock scope here doesn't deal with the current time like the other scopes do, so it's okay to just remove the lambda and have it be evaluated at the class level. However, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this will be deprecated in Rails 4, and instead it's recommended to always use a lambda instead. Uh, the reason being is because it's just too confusing and too easy to uh, introduce bugs if you don't use a lambda. For example, this available scope here, it doesn't look like we're using the current time, so you might skip the lambda, but it is important because it uses other scopes which reference the current time. So when in doubt, just use the lambda. Now an alternative to using this scope method is just to define a class method. You might want to do this especially if your scope takes arguments or is pretty long. So for example, in the uh, search scope here, I could just redefine this as a class method called search, which just returns that same result as the lambda. And that basically has the same effect. You can do everything you can do with a class method as you can do with a scope. Now scopes can only take us so far. We're still writing raw SQL code here, and it's important to be aware when doing this that databases might behave a little differently. For example, if we decide to switch to Postgres some point down the road, you have to be aware that that's going to be case sensitive comparison and you have to use an I like clause here if you want it to be a case insensitive match. So that little gotcha might cause some trouble down the road and it's easy to miss. Well, this is where Errol comes in handy. Active Record uses this under the hood to generate its SQL, but there are a lot of features that Errol includes that Active Record doesn't provide a nice interface for. In particular, I'm interested in the predicates that Errol provides, uh, which you can see in the documentation here. You can use less than, greater than, and so on to compare columns to various values. Fortunately, it's really easy to use Errol directly through Active Record. For example, in the Rails console here, I can just grab the Errol table by calling product.errol table and then I can uh, perform various actions on the attributes on here, such as uh, check if the price is uh, less than $10, and that returns what's called an error node. And nodes can be passed in directly into a where call in Active Record, and then that will return the products that match that given uh, query. Now, Errol doesn't have a lot of extensive documentation, so it's up to you to browse the source code to figure out everything that Errol is capable of doing. I'll give you some tips here for doing so. If you check out the lib directory, and then under Errol, uh, check out the predications file inside of here. That's a good place to start because it provides all the various methods which you can call on an attribute to figure out uh, the different uh, queries you can perform. 
For example, this matches method will generate an SQL like condition, but that's not really obvious from the source code here. Here it just makes a matches node. And if we check out the source code for that matches class, it's not really going to help either. Most of the nodes are just empty classes. Instead, we want to check out the visitors section of the arrow source code here. And here are various adapters for different types of databases. And Postgres is listed here. So if we check that out, you can see that there's a method defined for arrow nodes matches class for uh, it's going to use an I like uh, SQL clause here. Now this inherits a lot of functionality from the to SQL class. So if you check that out, you can see how the other nodes convert over to SQL. So with this knowledge, we can try it out in the console and find all the products where the name uh, matches some given a uh, user query. And here this will perform a like clause in SQLite, but in uh, Postgres it would do an I like condition. So now we can apply this to the search method in our model. Instead of doing raw SQL, we can access our error table and grab that name attribute and see if it matches that given query. A pretty simple change for some database agnostic behavior. Now we could apply the same thing to the other SQL queries as well, but I don't know if we'd be improving things. I often find the error code to be even less readable than the SQL. But where error really shines is when it acts as an engine driving another interface. For example, what if we used error to generate some name scopes? So instead of a where clause here, we can just call uh, released at less than that given time. I'm going to add this functionality in an initializer file under the config initializers directory. I'm going to make a new file here. I'll call it a scope generator.rb. Now I'm going to paste in the code for this because it's quite a bit, but let me walk you through it. Uh, first, I'm defining a module called scope generator, and then I'm going to extend that on active record base once it's loaded. So that means the methods defined here will be class methods on active record base and inherited by all models. So I make this generate scopes method, which will generate scopes for all the columns on that given table. And I call predicates for here, which is defined below to determine what kind of predicates based off of the type of column. So that means integer and numeric values, for example, will have less than, greater than, and so on, where string values will have matches. And for each of those predicates, we define a new scope with that column name and the predicate value and perform a where clause with that error table condition uh, calling that given predicate method and passing in the value. So back inside of our product model, I can now use that uh, generate scopes method. So that will generate scopes for all the columns that are relevant to the column type. Now you might want to make this fancier so that it, uh, you can specify which columns and scopes to uh, generate, but this will create that released at less than uh, scope. And we can actually just move this directly in line down here because it's a little bit smaller and simpler now and I'll probably do less, less than or equal to. And we could do the same thing for this uh, stock mentioned here. Just say um, stock is greater than two, greater than or equal to two. So we basically just removed two scopes here by that generate scopes call. And I can also use this inside of this search method. Instead of all this mumbo jumbo, it's just a name matches that given query, quite simple. Now, one thing to watch out for with this approach is performance, especially if you have a lot of columns, because that will generate a lot of scopes. Uh, if you run into this problem to get around this, you could override method missing and just uh, generate scopes lazily as they're called. Now, one area that this doesn't help is this scope right here because we have this or condition. Now, for quite a while, I've been wanting some way to perform or conditions on active record relation objects. So let's see if that's possible. What I would like to be able to do is say uh, discontinued at equals nil, or with a pipe symbol here, a discontinued at is a greater than time.zone.now. That would be pretty awesome. To do this, it helps to have a better understanding of how error and active record work together. For example, let's say I perform a query here, and let's find all the products where stock is two. And this returns an active record relation object, which I can call error on, and let's check the class that is generated from that. This generates a error select manager. Now an error select manager allows me to call constraints on it, and this will return an array of nodes, basically the where conditions of that given relation object. So this means I can take a node out of this constraint and call or on it, and then pass it any other node. So I can make another one, let's say where the ID 
is one and grab the arrow constraints and grab the first node off of that. So now we have a new node, which is an or condition of those two clauses. So now I can call product.where and pass in that new node and it will make that SQL query checking either one of those with an or condition. So with that concept in mind, let's generate another initializer file, this time called scope operators.rb. And I'll just paste in the code for this as well. It's a little bit more complex than what I showed in the console, just because it needs to take into consideration uh, different scenarios. Basically, I just define a scope operators module and load that by including it on active record relation when active record base loads. So this means this or method will be available on all relation objects and is aliased as a pipe down below here. And what I'm doing here is calling or arrow.constraints, which is what I showed in the console. And because this is, returns an array with possibly multiple constraints, I need to merge them all together. And so I call reduce and, and what that will do is basically take the first one, call and, and pass it the second one, call and, and pass it the third one, and so on, just like that. And then I do the same thing for the right side, which is the other scope that's passed in here. And then I merge those two scopes together and override their where values. So this is just a variable on active record relation, which I can override to change the nodes that's used by active record for the where values, because instead of merging, the normal behavior for merge is to and them together, but I want to or them together. And that's what this does right here when I override the where values. So let's try that out in the console and see if it works. I'll grab a, a where clause with a stock of one and use a pipe and grab products uh, with the ID of one and then wear those together and it produces the proper SQL query with the or clause, it works. Now why not take this a bit further and add some other operators? So I'll paste in the code here for a not method, which uh, basically does the same thing as the or clause, but this will basically just and them together and call not on the right side, so it reverses that one, and I aliased it as a minus sign, and I made an and method, which just calls the merge method and has an ampersand for that one. So we can use this to merge queries in pretty interesting ways now. Just for an example, let's see where the ID is between one and five, but not where the ID is two, how about? So that makes that SQL query where the ID is between those values, but not that given value. Now I want to finish up this episode by showing you one other approach for defining queries. And this will work as an alternative to the scope generator I showed you earlier. So instead of having named scopes all over the place, uh, let's say, what if we could just call where and say released at, and then pass in a hash here and say less than or equal to that given value. Uh, this is especially nice with the Ruby 1.9 hash syntax. Now, instead of trying to mess with adding this behavior to the where call, uh, let's just make a new method. I'll just call it match. So how might we define this? Well, I'm going to implement it under the initializer directory again. Let's call it uh, match scope.rb. And I'll just paste in the code for this as well. Uh, this defines a match method, which is extended on active record base. So it's available as a class method on all models. And the code here is a little bit complex for one method. So you might want to refactor this out into maybe a separate class or something. Anyway, the end result here is just to call where given a clause, and this is actually an arrow um, node. And so that this is going to basically build up that matches hash that's passed into here using various and and or combinations depending on what's passed in as options and basically just building up an arrow condition through that. So with that in place, I can call match on any model and pass in attributes and use arrow conditions inside of here. So let's say less than a three, and then that will generate a query matching that condition. Now it's a little bit more complicated than this because it can handle other cases where there's an array of values, let's say nil or less than three, and it will handle that situation properly as well. Now how might this affect our product search if we apply it here? Well, I'll paste in some code for doing this, and it's just defining one search method with a single call to match and providing various conditions, released at, less than equal to that, discontinued is that value or, greater than the time, and so on. And frankly, this is probably the cleanest option I've seen so far for this particular query, but of course your cases will vary depending on the type of queries you're working with. Now let's try the search method out in the console and see if it works. I'll just pass in a simple string here, and it generates a fairly complex query, 
for considering it's a small hash of conditions that we passed in through that search method, and it returns the products properly. So what we ended up with is several different ways to rewrite the same query, and feel free to use the initializer files in your own projects, or maybe just build on top of them and turn them into a gem or whatever. Or if you don't want to use these approaches, uh, hopefully you just learned something about Errol and ActiveRecord in this episode. And that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.